Hello. <laughs> so, if I had really had a heart attack, how many of you are confident that you would know what to do to save my life? Put your hands up if you are. Okay, so some, some, but many of you are not confident at all. And to be honest, you're right to be worried. Because today, about a thousand people will die in Europe alone from cardiac arrest and choking. And about the same number in the United States and many more all around the world. Now, many of those victims could be saved if the people around them knew simple emergency skills. Now, wouldn't it be great if we had a better way to teach those emergency skills? Maybe we could use the internet to do it. Maybe we could do something like this. Lifesaver is an experiment in a whole new way to teach emergency skills. Hey, what are you doing? It's a movie you play like a game. It throws you into three situations where someone will be dead in 10 minutes unless you do the right thing. You learn by doing. Do it wrong and see the consequences. Come on, breathe then, what do you do? Call for an ambulance. Okay. Do it right and sense the thrill of saving a life. Isn't that the ambulance? Should we just wait for the ambulance people to arrive? Deliver a shot now. No, no, he can't wait. Yes, the flashing orange button. Shot delivered. Be Jake, sure come on, the come on, wake up! Come on, wake up! Jake, <laughs> did it work? Did it work, Jake? Please. Skies, please! Start CPR. Do something! Okay, we'll start CPR again. <laughs> what do we do? Do something. What do we do? So words like that are being said hundreds of times all around the world today. So what might be wrong with the current way of teaching people how to do CPR? I found out way back in 2004. Now, this is not a picture of me, OK? Uh, but it was this kind of course. Uh, little plastic dummy, one teacher for about 10 people, uh, tea and biscuits, very nice and relaxed. Now, after the course, I got talking to the teacher, who was an ambulance guy, and he said that this form of teaching has got some fundamental problems. It's small scale. One teacher, 10 people. So it's always going to be very difficult to get to a situation where hundreds of thousands or millions of people know this stuff. It's expensive, because it's small scale, and it's inconvenient. Very often, people who want to do one of these courses can't find a course. It's forgettable. People generally find that they forget what they've learned on one of these courses after about six months. They don't forget completely, but they forget to the extent that if a crisis really happens, they don't actually step forward and help, because they don't have the confidence. But then the final problem was, in a sense, the most challenging. It's unrealistic. What the ambulance guy said is that if you are trying to save a friend of yours or a family member who's having a heart attack or choking, it will quite possibly be the most terrifying moment of your life. There will be screaming, there will be shouting, there will be blood, there will be panic. It will not be at all nice or polite. And this form of training just doesn't prepare you for that. All of this leads to something called the bystander effect. That comes in two horrible flavors. There's the untrained bystander. So those are people who've never done a CPR course, they have no idea how to save someone who's choking. There's a crisis, they just have no idea what to do. And so, of course, they can't help. Now, that's bad enough, but what's worse is the trained bystanders. So those are people who have done a course, and this happens all the time. They have done a course, but when they see a real crisis, they're just completely frozen because they just have no... It's so different from what they've been seen before that they just can't help, and so they don't do anything and so people die as a result. So, this is clearly something which could use a better idea. So I thought, why don't we take video and put it together with interactivity? We can make it realistic. So the videos will be very gritty, lots of screaming, lots of shouting, lots of panic. 
It'll be interactive, so you can't just sit back and watch the video and let it sort of flow over you. You'll have to do things all the way through to make things happen. Uh, it will be a complement to existing training. No one on the Lifesaver project thinks that you should not do a traditional training course. If you can get on a traditional course, terrific, do it. But if you've done a course and you've kind of forgotten and you want a refresher, or if you can't get on one of the traditional courses, or if you just want more realism, then there will be this for you. It'll be convenient because it'll be online the whole time and we'll make it free. But of course that means we need to get funding. So this is 2004, I thought, you know, an interactive film to save people's lives. Who is not going to want to fund that, right? Okay, so cut to 2011. After seven years, I'd managed to raise half the money. Uh, by that stage, I was working with a company called Unit 9, and uh, we had managed to get 50% of the funding we needed from a UK government agency called the Technology Strategy Board. So we needed to find the other 50%, but we had 12 months, so we weren't worried. We went to the biggest uh, first aid charity in the UK and had some great meetings with them, and they came back with their feedback, which was... No. But we said uh, about eight months by that stage, so we still weren't worried. We went to a big UK uh, medical charity, had some great meetings again, and they came back with their feedback, which was... No. So the, by this stage, we started to panic. Uh, and we went to everyone we could think of. We went to ch tiny charities, like the Resuscitation Council UK, and they came back with their feedback, which was, yes. So, Dr. Jasmeet Saw, Dr. Andy Lockie, and uh, Sarah Mitchell were the three decision makers at the Resuscitation Council UK who finally decided to give us the rest of the money we needed two days before the deadline. If they hadn't said yes, Lifesaver would never have happened. It was that close. Okay, so Lifesaver was completed. Uh, it's three films. In two of the films, you save someone who's had a heart attack. In one of the films, you save someone who's choking. And we throw you right in at the deep end. So let's look at the first choice that you come across in the first film. I don't think he's walking around. Jake, come on. Jake. Jake? Come, come on, on Jake. Open your eyes, come on. Jake. Should we call someone? I, I, I don't know. Jake. Can you Jake, hear me? Come on, open your eyes. Can you even breathe? Why does he keep doing that in his mouth? Come on, mate, please. Let's say this is you. You're not a first aid expert. What do you do now? So here we have the bystander choice for you. So you have to positively get involved. OK, now this choice, we're in a pedestrian environment. There's no cars or so on. Do we do the health and safety thing, check for any risks, or do we just go and save the guy? So check for danger, hands up. Run to him now, hands up. Right, OK, thank you, madam. So let's just try run to him Why? now. Oh, when we get hit by a bicycle. So that happens very often. You know, if you're ever in that situation, madam. Um, it's fine, it's fine. She's enthusiastic, that's the important thing. If you're ever in that situation, um, uh, very often people get injured because they're so anxious to help. Lifesaver is available in three versions. There is one for computer and two for tablet and smartphone. For tablet and smartphone, you, you move your device up and down two times a second. And if you're on iPhone, this is what you're seeing. So you're getting very accurate feedback on are you really doing it at the right speed and so on. So it's a nice tactile way of learning CPR. So uh, guidelines for doing, doing good talks tend to say no more than about two words per slide. Right? Now, Lifesaver has been out for more than a year. How's it done? So this is the worst slide you're going to see all evening. Uh, these are the prizes that it's picked up. Uh, it won a Webby, it was nominated for a BAFTA, won four golds in the UK e-learning awards, and no project had ever won more than uh, two golds, which was you know, nice. Um, lots of Twitter support. Uh, a woman in the UK uh, spontaneously set up a competition for her friends with a £20 prize, which was a quiz about Lifesaver to get her friends to do Lifesaver. So I thought, great, because of course I knew all the answers to the quiz. So I thought I could score kind of 20 pounds really easily, but you know, she said it would be cheating, so she wouldn't let me. Uh, we've had very kind remarks. Um, most powerful game experience of my life, Lifesaver immersed viscerally. Um, one question that often bugs internet people is, can a website make you cry? 
Lifesaver answers this quite convincingly. Uh, for example, this is the most amazing interactive site, really emotional and effective, it made me cry at the end. And there are many other tweets and emails like that. Uh, we had a great bonus, which is uh, the star of film three, Daisy Ridley, was recently cast in Star Wars, reputedly as the daughter of Han Solo and Princess Leia. Now, with Daisy, I almost didn't cast her because she was so beautiful. You know, we wanted, like, normal-looking people. Uh, but she was so good at acting, I thought, oh, don't have any choice. So she was absolutely fantastic, and, of course, she's brought in lots of new viewers. That footage, I should say, has never been seen before. Uh, it's not actually in the final film, so that's the only time it's ever been viewed. Okay, so that's all fine, but it's all a bit anecdotal, right? Give me some proof. A doctor did heart rate tests on someone watching two typical CPR films. Now, CPR films, like CPR training, tend to be very nice and polite and a little bit dull. And you can see here that the heart rate never gets above 87 beats per minute watching these CPR films. Lifesaver, by contrast, the heart rate gets up to 105 beats per minute, and that's the desktop version where you're just pressing buttons. So one question I often get asked by film people is, yeah, 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 but does the interactivity actually make a difference? Couldn't you just show regular video with people screaming and shouting, and wouldn't that be good enough? Well, again, uh, the data shows that the interactivity does make a difference. Without interaction, the, the heart rate never gets above 83 beats per minute, because what's happening is that the interaction is making you feel this is your problem you're the one who has to save this person, and so it becomes much more emotionally involving, much more gripping. South Bristol Community Hospital in England did tests with a random selection of members of the public. They found that confidence in doing CPR rose from 37% before Lifesaver to 74% after, and 100% of the people they tested said they were much more likely to help out in a real emergency. Okay, now Lifesaver is an idea. And it's an idea that can be applied to all sorts of crises. We want, naturally, we want to do Lifesaver for Germany, for the United States, for China, but we also want to do 12 most common emergencies, everything from drowning to car crash. We want to do one about women's personal safety. We want to do one about what to do in an earthquake, and so on. So lots of great potential for this approach, for this idea. How many of these projects are currently funded? How many are currently underway? Not one single Lifesaver project is currently underway. We went back to the first aid charities, went back to the medical charities, absolutely no interest. What's the reason? Well, it's obvious, right? I suck. Clearly, I suck at marketing and just, you know, I'm just hopeless at getting these things underway. Who could do a better job? You could. It's not that difficult to make a film like Lifesaver. It's not that different from making a regular video. There are just six secrets that we need to look at, and then you can make your own. It's not that hard. It's something you do. So, Lifesaver or a Lifesaver-type film is not a film that tells a story where someone has a heart attack. Lifesaver is where you save somebody who's had a heart attack. It's not a choose-your-own-adventure story with lots of different endings. It's a film with one ending where you save the victim. To get there, you have to fight lots of battles. If you lose, then the victim dies. You go back a bit, you try again. But at the end, you will save the victim. You need an interactive film director. Lots of interactive films fail dreadfully. And one common reason is they just get a regular director who just does the videos and then walks away, and the videos are thrown over a glass wall to the interactive people who work on it separately. And so the whole thing just collapses horribly. What you need is one person who's looking after the concept, the script, the shoot, the coding, the launch, so the whole thing is nicely integrated. You need an interactive production house. Now, the interactive production house on Lifesaver was a company called Unit 9, and Piero Frescobaldi, the creative director, and Yates Buckley, the technical partner, did an absolutely fantastic job, along with the coders and designers, and they made Lifesaver what it is. Real people gives you real emotion. Sometimes people say, yeah, but why not just make it like a video game with computer-generated imagery? You could. 
But of course, then you wouldn't have anything like the same emotional connection that comes from real people in real places. And then finally, don't make it interactive unless you must. Linear video is a fabulous medium. You just want to tell a story, linear. You just want to record a talk, linear. It's a beautiful medium. But if it's fundamental to your project that the viewer must do something, then interactivity, editor video, is dynamite. But handle it carefully and only use it if you have to. <laughs> OK, guys, thanks a lot. We'll take it from here. OK, okay we're going to take over the CPR in three, two, one. Until analysis will resume. Thank you so much. Oh, it's OK. I just hope it's OK. Thank you so much. <laughs> Well done. You did a brilliant job. Well done. Thanks. Lifesaver shows we can use the internet and interactive film to teach emergency skills better and save lives. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.